So I realized one of the good, an analogy that may be happening, you know, that may be transpiring right now, we may be in 2008 or 2009, and iPhone was introduced in 2007. And we may be having this iPhone moment where the General Motors and Fords, et cetera, they are the Nokias of the world. They own, they own the industry. They own the, like Nokia was the king the of dumb phones. traditional platform, yes, right? The, yeah. Nokia was the king of dumb phones. Yeah. General Motors is the, you know, and, and the others are the, the kings of... Uh, Combustible engine. Dumb cars. Let's yeah. call it this. Dumb cars. It, the, the dumb cars. Where electric car is a, is in, is a very different... If, even though it looks the same, it's very different inside. Yeah. It's a... Sure. The battery, you know, so where in a, in a gasoline car, the engine is the most important part. Where this where these uh, companies have huge, uh, I don't know, spend hundreds, probably billions of hours of, on R&D. Yeah. All that knowledge it becomes irrelevant when you go to, when you go to electric car because right. the most important part in electric car is actually the battery. And so the just like Nokia has you know even though when uh, iPhone came out Nokia should have looked at Apple and said thank you so much Apple now we know what the future phone would look like. Right. That didn't happen and here's why, because you had a, you shifted from one domain to another. It's a shift in domains. It's not just like we introduced. Um, uh, just a little bit better smart dumb phone. Even though dumb phone smartphones still made phone calls, that was probably the least important part of the device. Right. Right. And it birthed a new product line entirely. Right. Yes. Like we're an entire vertical of new products. Yes. Out, you right? go from one ecosystem to another. Yeah. To, to another. Yeah, I can see that. And so when you go from one domain to another, your assets become your liabilities. I'll give you an example. Mm. Just think about this for a second. Yeah. So, Nokia had thousands of engineers that were very good at hardware. But it had very few engineers that were specialized in software user interface, right? Mm -hmm. So think about think about General Motors. They have thousands of engineers that are so good at designing these very complex engines, which are completely irrelevant in this new domain. Where suddenly this big concoction is replaced by this little thing that's commodity. And then when we looked at what happened at the uh, there was a there was a General Motors strike, right? That's why you have a strike because basically employees saying. Well, electric cars, you don't need these engines. You, you know, so the, if we're going to start making these electric engines, we're going to make less money and you need fewer people. You can auto, automate it more. Mm -hmm. So those employees are now went from being assets to becoming a liability. So uh, their foot, you know, these companies, all of them are unionized. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's becoming even more difficult to make very drastic changes you need to make. Yeah. So the... One of the takeaways from doing all this research, I realized that even though we today make a foregone, it's like a, we, we assume that every uh, gasoline manufacturer, car manufacturer, will be able to transition to electric cars successfully. I think I would like to challenge the thesis. I'm not sure that's actually. I'm I'm not saying that's not necessarily going to happen. Right. But I'm saying that's not 100% probability. Right. And you know, like if you look at the going back to Dumfons analogy, so you had a, a Nokia and Motorola and BlackBerry have made, have failed to make this transition, but then Samsung has done a great great job, has yeah. benefited from that. So you're gonna have winners and losers. 